Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to the episode. In this episode, this is going to be part 2 of the Porsche 911 RC Correa build. Um, in my last episode, I actually used this car for my special 1500 subscriber special video. So, uh, I did mention if I did at least get 55 likes in that video, I'll do a part 2 uh, adding the roof engine swap. Now, I just now looked at my phone. I've reached about 40 likes, but considering how well that episode did, I mean, I'm still going to do part two, um, even though I did not really hit that hit like criteria, which is okay. So, of course, this is going to be part two of the episode. So, in this episode, if, in case this is your, your first time watching this, I'm going to give a full build guide of this car. Um, so, first things first, if you don't have the car, here's the car itself right here at the used car dealership. Um, here is the stats of the car as well. It's going to cost you about 260,000 credits just to buy it. So just one win at Le Mans should give you easily the credits you need for this car. About over 295 horsepower, 261 pounds of torque. Its weight is 2,800 pounds, naturally aspirated. And overall, very decently good car, um, even without the swap in the car. Now let's move over to part two of the build. Now as you guys can see, I've already have the Y body already installed from our last episode so the main thing we're going to go here and do is add the engine swap and here it is on the very bottom right of the corner right here now to make one thing clear um, my cursor can interact with that option and the only way you can actually interact with buying an engine swap is only one thing and one thing only make sure that your collector level is level 50 that is the hot pink number right up here if you're level 50 you have the shot to buy ultimate parts and certain engine swaps for certain cars. So here's the engine itself, CTR38-CTR3, otherwise as the 2007 rough car that's in the game. And as you can see, there's a lot of good buffs uh, in this package. Um, two big things that are huge noticeable uh, besides the turbocharger aspiration on the car is that one, the power to the weight to power rate goes drastically down to 1.51 but I think the biggest thing out there that you can easily see is the max torque um, is actually around 650 so a huge gain on the max torque now as you guys can see that the performance points is over 620 points to so actually do have to do some major nerfing um, in order for this car to work um, at Tokyo Expressway uh, but still a very good swap now let's say if you're not level 50 yet in the game let's say you're 45 or 46 um, here is an alternate way to do the swap so here we are our, our home let's go, go to tuning parts once you click on tuning parts here is all the engines that you will collect uh, throughout the game now here's my own personal engines I have my own personal uh, tuning parts now fortunately I can't show you what to look out for if you do have that particular engine model however I can tell you uh, two clues two giveaways uh, one huge giveaway is if you have the right engine for that car um, you'll have one task bar that's a little bit lighter shade than the other so you should be pretty easily noticeable also the other thing which is also easily to see is that on the top right corner of that taskbar um, I'm going to move my cursor up just for demonstration if you see that the word compatible right up here where my cursor is swaying back and forth uh, then I'll let you know that you have the engine swap it'll ask you if you want to do the swap or not if you say yes uh, then it automatically will give you the free swap for free um, so that is an alternative way to get the engine swap for free just in case if you're not have it reached all 50 yet so part three is going to be delivery for the car and here's delivery um, I decided it was very appropriate to actually have a rough livery on this car and this is based out of the rough CTR2 from Gran Turismo 3 um, as you can already see the livery itself is a wide car kit livery so make sure the car is in fact wide um, now if you want to look up for this livery yourself if you don't follow me in the game I really recommend just searching the word rough um, if you should look it up it should pop up every time the first number one choice um, now if you're curious of what the parts consist of just in case you don't want the livery um, the rims is Intel Racing RP05 rims make sure they're set to Y for the rim width and the offset set that to wide make sure the rim diameter is set to 19 inch 
Um, so that's it for the rims. After that, for your custom parts, the front is going to be Type A. The side is going to be Type A as well. The rear is going to be standard. And last but not least, the wing is going to be Type A as well. And after that, um, if you guys want to add some little customization to the delivery can, like your hood, pin, or toe hook, if you want to, um, same way goes for your other items as well. But other than that, that is all, everything that you need uh, for car customization. Now let's move over here at the tuning shop. We're going to do our stage one of major buffing. So we're going to go to extreme and we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a new body. And what this will allow us to do is we'll restore our body's weight, uh, basically. As you see, we'll add a lot of weight back to the car. So therefore, our weight protection stages one, two, and three are now no longer existing on the car. Um, as I'll show you guys in a second. So here is our new engine swap for our car. Um, so here's the overall setup. So the first things first, our tires is going to be sport hards. After that, we're going to have suspension keep it normal, just like it was on the last episode. Differential is going to be fully customized, and I recommend saying your torque acceleration to 5, and your braking, I set mine to 20. If you guys want to do more, you can. Your downforce, the front, is going to be UNO, number 1. Uh, the rear is going to be 169. Uh, for your full control computer, for your ECU, make sure it's 93. Same thing for your power restrictor 2, make sure it's set to 93 as well. Fully customized manual transmission. Set that to 320 for your top speed automatically. And as we scroll to the far right of the page, that is it uh, for the setup. So just mainly adjust your power rate and your ECU to 93. And just a little modifications on the front and rear wing and you're good to go. Very simple, very easy setup. So as we get this race start, one thing I can tell is the car actually has a more of a punchy acceleration uh, than our last episode. You can see we're already in the top 10, leaving the tunnel. In sixth gear, and you can just see our speed is rising as well. We're going to easily pass the other Porsche, and then we're going to be right behind the GTR. Uh, we're actually going to try to make a move right as we get done for the first turn. Very close to GTR, the RX-7 gets wide. GTR has to brake to avoid hitting it. And again, the GTR and the RX-7 both take a very weird awkward line, which gives us the advantage of getting a double overtake. Moving us to fourth place, so very good start for us. Um, all we have to worry about now is the older Impreza, the older Supra, and of course the Honda NSX, the lead car. Uh, but as I can tell with this particular build, uh, last time I did mention the rear end of the car actually does kick out a little bit. Um, it seems like for this particular setup, it's actually more of a punch. Um, the rear end does actually kick a little bit more. But I can tell the handling somehow, some way, is a little bit better. Um, I just wonder if it's because we have a turbocharger as our aspiration. It's probably that. I could be wrong though. But I could tell that the car itself, the handling was a little bit better, just slightly better. Um, but as, but as well, the rear end actually kicked out a little bit more. So I gave it more of a maybe a slight oversteer feel. Maybe I'm not too sure. But as you can see, we got. Pretty loose and smacked the wall hard, but we are actually closer to the leader than we were in the last episode, uh, which is a pretty huge uh, considering this is the end of the first lap. And you can see, uh, you can actually see the HUD of the race leader. Uh, so we actually might have a chance to actually grab the lead a lot earlier uh, than we did in our last episode. So as we get to, back to the main straight, um, pretty much close pace with the race leader. Uh, matter of fact, once we actually pass fifth gear to sixth gear will then be able to really reel in the leader so as we get down our first lap a very good fast lap um, as we have that nice toe from the Honda it's gonna be a 220.3 for our first lap and as we're about to exit out the tunnel we should be able to get the lead which we do right here we're gonna do a nice link shot hitting our speed over 200 miles per hour and as we go ahead and fast forward now to all the way to lap 7 uh, this is gonna be our lap to pit um, as you can see in this particular build, our pit stop lap is number 7, while on the other build without the swap is lap 8. Um, another thing to take into consideration, the rear tires are actually has more wear uh, than the, the, the stock engine. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pit road, get ourselves some fuel, uh, just enough to last us for the rest of the race. And I'm also going to go ahead and get ourselves 
new tires. Um, we could have just did fuel only, but I didn't want to risk it, especially those tires pretty much wearing off a good bit. Um, so like I said before, just add enough fuel just to get by, finish up the race, and you'll be good to go. Uh, no need to fill all the way up 100%, that way you'll be wasting your time. Also, you'll be weighing the car down because of the liquid inside the car. So, let us now fast forward to what will be lap number 9. This is going to be our hot lap of the race, so I'm going to do, I'm going to let you guys watch this clip and just mainly just watch the car, see what it does around the track, especially with this swap. Really nice swap as well. So, I'll let you guys enjoy this clip and I'll see you guys at the finish line. So we did 206.621. That is a lot faster than our stock build. Um, anyway, as we get down with this race, we almost put the Alfa Romeo lap down. Our total time is 26.13. With the stock engine, uh, we were able to do a 26.22, I believe, and our fastest lap was a 207.999, literally 208 flat. But you can see uh, the car was very quick much faster improved uh, overall race time of 26.13 very well pleased and very happy before the setup it just drove really good and like I mentioned before it had more of a punchy feel to it um, a little bit more in the rear but at the same time it had a really good strong uh, speed as well in the straights and the, in the those uh, slower corners as well but anyway that's going to be it for the video hopefully you guys were able to enjoy the episode um, really enjoy this build a lot and if you guys are not able to get the win at Tokyo Expressway with this particular build my best suggestion is save it and just use it at Le Mans because that car is really good on acceleration has really good decent and good handling and of course the top speed is really good as well so really enjoy this build hopefully it'll help you out at Tokyo Expressway and if you guys would like to check out the last episode I did covered yesterday using the stock version of this build uh, here is the video right up, up there you can click that as well hopefully that will help out too um, again if you guys enjoyed the episode why not leave a like and if you also would like to also subscribe to the channel as well which would be highly appreciated hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night wherever you might be and I'll see you guys later take care